Today I'm going to be talking about why I purchased an Aerie Alexa Classic in 2022. Aerie makes the best digital cameras in the world. Uh, the, the color science, the dynamic range are the best. I would say the Red Monstro has a similar amount of dynamic range, but it's about how the image is carried. The highlight roll off, the roll off into the shadows is just beautiful. You can accomplish that with other cameras, but with Aerie, it's there when you capture it. There's no need to finesse it. So let's talk about what's inside this camera. Well, it's the ELV-3 sensor. And a lot of people don't know this, but every single Aerie camera has that same sensor in it. Whether it's the Classic or maybe the Mini or the Mini LF, which is like a you know $60,000 camera, or the most expensive digital camera you can get and you can actually only rent them is the uh, Alexa 65, which is 6K. So how can a 6K camera have a, the same sensor as this 2.8K uh, Classic? They're stitching the sensors together, and that's kind of how Airy explains it, actually. So you have your Super 35 lineup, which is the Classic, the XT, the Amira, and the Mini. And then you have your full-frame uh, LF and Mini LF, and then you have the 65, which is like large format, like three sensors stitched together, the full frame ones are like two stitched together and then you have the single sensor, you know, uh, Super 35 cameras like the Classic. So, <clears throat> this Classic, Alexa Classic, has the same sensor as the most expensive digital camera you can buy. That's pretty nuts and it's pretty cool. It's something very unique to Aerie. Every other camera manufacturer has a different sensor in every camera for the most part, like RED. Almost every camera is a different, unique sensor. And the issue with that is you're just getting a different look. You're getting different color, different noise, different handling of the image. And uh, that's it, very unique to Aerie. And to me, it's one of the biggest benefits is you always have that consistency in what you're getting. And if I were to purchase the LF, I could cut this with the LF and you'd not see a significant difference. So I would say buying this camera, I haven't had the buyer's remorse or that kind of gear lust that you get after you get any other camera really that I've gotten. You know, I've owned most brands, you know, Blackmagic, Red, uh, Panasonic, Sony, Fuji, uh, probably more that I can't think of. Uh, Canon, um, but buying this camera, it's like there's nowhere to go once you get an Ari, but getting another Ari, like a more expensive one. And here's why you might not need or want to get a more expensive one. When we're talking about simply the look that this camera gives, the sensor, it's got the same sensor as the Alexa Mini, which is a $40,000 camera. If you look up the, the specs, the Mini shoots. 2.8K raw uh, in 16 by 9. This does the same thing. Um, the difference on the Mini is it lets you use the entire sensor to get 3.4K open gate, which is like an odd aspect ratio. On this, it only allows the 16 by 9 aspect ratio in raw, and the edges of the sensor are not available to use. Uh, you can actually access it on the menu on this guy, and you'll see. It gives you like a red box and it shows you what you can record and then you see what's outside of that, which is the full sensor. And they didn't allow the full sensor recording on this camera because they said the, the edges of the sensor weren't good enough to use. Seems kind of silly to me, but you know, it's, it's an airy thing. But it's the same sensor <laughs> and you're paying so much less for the exact same look. So let's talk about one of the like hot button issues, which is resolution. So, for me, a good argument is, if the Mini is good enough, then this is good enough. Because they have the same sensor. Like, end of the story. But, but let's, let's delve into it a little more. Resolution. Um, you can get high-resolution cameras for cheap now. Even 8K cameras, right? It's becoming pretty common. Um, do you need it? 
Well, I mean, there's like cropping in post, you know, 4K, 6K can be helpful, especially I would say 6K. Um, but it's like, it's something I rarely do. It's very niche. Red really kind of marketed this whole idea of, oh, you can get two shots in one. It's like, who, who actually does that? Um, especially for narrative. Uh, it's like, no. Um, but... Are you really going to see a difference? That's the question. And oftentimes, no. When you compare side by side, yes. Otherwise, probably not. Why do we need 4K? Why do you need 4K? Do you actually need 4K? Uh, I don't think you could convince me that you do when all these big films were mastered in two. Uh, um, even Blade Runner uh, 2049, that was shot on the XT. Again, same sensor. Uh, and that is one of the like greatest science fiction, recent science fiction films of all time. That did not need 4K. The film looks astounding. And then it's like, okay, it, your your movie is not being in, being played in theaters even. Uh, it's just being played on smaller personal home screens, you know, uh, which are often 4K, 8K resolution, much higher than 2K theater projectors. But unless the screen is massive you're not really going to be able to tell, especially if you're not sitting right up to the screen. So even with 4K and 8K uh, televisions, it's like it's a non-issue. There's a testament to this in that the Alexa Mini has a mode, that a 4K UHD recording mode, and it's only using 3.2K resolution, but it's being upscaled to UHD 4K. And what does that mean? It's just in-camera sharpening. They're just sharpening the image. And it looks sharper, and then people are like, oh, it's 4K. Because at the end of the day, it's all kind of BS. Nobody needed that 4K. It was just something that you could give to people, and like, oh, this, this says 4K, it's 4K. And they're like, oh, good. And never caused any issues, because there was never any issue. Um, now, in the future, uh, when they do make uh, actual 4K, 8K uh, projectors or digital screens for theater, um, that's where you'll have an issue um, with projecting uh, or showing a 2K uh, resolution thing on a huge, massive 8K screen. That's where it could become a bigger issue. Uh, but that's not here. I mean... Movies are still all projected everywhere in 2K. And even if that's the case, is your movie playing in theaters? And if it is, you'll likely have the budget to shoot with an LF or, you know, whatever other camera. Even in the future, 2K is still very viable and certainly is right now for almost any application. Even if you're shooting a VFX heavy thing because it's going to make your post-production much easier than trying to edit in 4K. That's my opinion on that. So will this camera work for every application? Well, if you're shooting on a big production, it's going to work. But what if you're doing stuff like I do oftentimes uh, in the last two years, where I'm the DP, I'm the camera operator, uh, oftentimes gaffing, don't have any grips, don't have an AC. Could this work for that? Probably not so much. Uh, if I was doing a production like that, I'd want at least uh, another operator so we can switch off operating um, and that would ease the burden. And then I could kind of be like the AC uh, when he's operating and he could be the AC when I'm operating. And uh, that would that would work. Um, I mean, I'm, I do crazy stuff. I do <laughs> where I'm just running the entire day doing all these different jobs um, for 14 hours, you know, plus. It's intense, but it, it would honestly be doable on this, um, but I would want like a legit operator that I could switch off with, um, you know, especially for stuff like handheld where this would get heavy. Uh, the thing is, I don't like gimbals. I don't really use gimbals. Um, I'm often using like a Dana Dolly, uh, which is perfectly capable of supporting an Alexa. And... The thing about uh, cameras this weight um, is they're more stable. 
they actually increase the smoothness and stability of your shots and give a certain weight to everything, especially for handheld, but even for stuff that's on a dolly. Um, if I'm doing like a ton of moving stuff, I prefer Steadicam to uh, gimbals. And you actually want a heavier camera when you're using a Steadicam. So it's not really that big of an issue. Yes, the support gear is more expensive. Yes, you can't throw this on a gimbal if you really like gimbals, which I don't. Um, but it's not really that big of a hassle for me personally. And like with anything, you know, there's give and takes. Uh, you might sacrifice some movement, um, but the image is worth it for me. And my style is often not quite as much movement, so it definitely works for me. So let's talk specs real quick. What can this camera do? Well, it can do HD at ProRes 422HQ up to 120 frames per second. It can do 2K at ProRes 444 up to 60 frames per second. Externally, it can do 2.8K RAW up to 60 frames per second. And that's what you got with the frame rates and resolutions. So this camera doesn't have internal RAW. But what you can do is shoot in ProRes 444 and you get that, you know, 14-bit color information. So what you do, take it into DaVinci Resolve, put it into ACES, use the Arri Log C profile, and now you have precise and accurate uh, adjustment of exposure and white balance, which is one of the biggest benefits of shooting in RAW. Um, I mean, that's what shooting RAW gives you. It's giving you that RAW sensor information so that the software that you're editing in can read it and give you precise control and accurate control of white balance and exposure. If you just throw in regular ProRes or H.264 and you're trying to adjust those values, the NLE is just guessing and it's never accurate. So use ACES. That's, that's your workaround and it's an industry standard. And of course, you can shoot raw on this camera. It's 2.8K. It's going to be a little sharper, uh, mainly due to just the raw processing is a little more sharper than the ProRes processing because the ProRes is downsampled um, from 2.8K. The actual detail amount is very similar. It is uncompressed raw. Uh, the files aren't that huge just because it's 2.8K. It's not like 4K or 6K where it, it would be kind of astronomical. So it's kind of doable. I just haven't bothered with it because I don't see the need. You know, you have ProRes 444 2K, looks astounding. So this guy does chew through batteries. Uh, it's not as power hungry as the XT or like, God forbid the Alexa 65. Um, but you know, compared to a lot of cameras, it's using more power. So you do need quite a few batteries. Um, I have this set right here, which gets me through almost any day of shooting. Uh, this guy in particular gives me like three hours of recording. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about is post-production. I'm oftentimes handing off footage and I don't know where it will go. I don't know who's coloring it. I don't know how skilled they'll be in, you know, in their craft. So having a camera that looks so good just right off the bat is, you know, peace of mind for me. You know, maybe sometimes I want to blow out a window a little bit. And with the cheaper camera, I know how to make it look good in post, give it that roll off and it, and it looks great. Um, but a lot of people won't know to do that or just won't do it. And then you'll have this very harsh highlights where the Alexa, it just rolls things off in camera. And it's so nice. Um, same with the color science. Uh, it's just so nice straight off the bat, the skin tones, everything very accurate um, and you just don't get that with other cameras and yeah you can make any camera look good but it's like who's going to be doing that um, oftentimes I'm not I don't have the control of that and if I'm shooting in a quicker paced setting I may not have the time to get the lighting exactly where I want it and this camera is just much more forgiving so as a DP I, I know that post is half the process so having the peace of mind um, that the Alexa brings is very valuable to me. So how heavy is this camera actually? Well, I mean, you could see my strain when pulling it from over there. Uh, it's 14 pounds, just the body. So, you know, you add your battery, some accessories, and it gets to be more. 
Uh, I definitely tend to shoot with lighter lenses and that brings the overall weight down. Um, but it's no joke. It's a, it's a heavy boy. It's definitely going to be two, three, four times heavier than some other options. But like the LF, you know, is the same body as this. Uh, it's not it's not really outdated, to be honest. It's just not as practical as smaller cameras for run and gun productions. But it's also, I think people really exaggerate uh, what's doable and not doable. I mean, people used to shoot stuff on film. Think about how unpractical that is. This is like a dream <laughs> to anyone 20 years ago. Um, so to me, it's like, yes, perfectly doable. And you get the best image of all time. What's not to like? So again, the purchase for me was really a no-brainer. Um, other people have more hesitations, but I don't know what to tell them. This is the camera that I chose. It's the camera that I'm perfectly happy with. Uh, six months later and will be for the foreseeable future, you know. Aries is king. Uh, we'll see if anyone dethrones them, you know, in the next 10 years.